Good evening. With your Sportsnet New York News, I'm John Eddy. The Yankees have already clinched the American League East, and tonight they look to clinch home field advantage for the first two playoff rounds. They enter tonight's game tied with the Detroit Tigers at 94-62. and 62. Meanwhile, the double play combination of Derek Jeter and Robinson Cano look to close the gap on Minnesota's catcher Joe Maurer for the American League batting title. Top four O's up 2-1. Patterson hits one off the fist to short center, but the captain, Derek Jeter, makes a great over-the-shoulder catch to end the inning. To the batting race we go. Robinson Cano in the top of the fourth inning hits this bomb to the opposite field to tie the game up at two. And following suit, Jeter hits a line drive to left to keep pace with Cano. And with Jeter on first, Bobby Abreu came to the plate. Fly away ball deep off the facade, giving him six as a Yankee and 200 for the club. The Yanks now have seven consecutive seasons with 200 or more home runs. Back to Robinson Cano, base hit over Brian Roberts' head as he finished two for four, as would Derek Jeter. Sheffield to the plate with Cano on second and two out, rips a base hit to left. And the throw comes up the line as Sheffield is hung up in a rundown, but the run scored, putting the Yankees up 5-3. It would prove to be a big run as Scott Proctor gets in a jam, one run already in, but he gets Miguel Tejada to fly out to center to earn his first major league save. Roger Clemens entered Sunday's game with 248 wins and over 4,500 strikeouts, second only to Nolan Ryan. Sunday night's game was important on two fronts. It was potentially Clemens' last game at home with the Astros, and at 77-78, and 78, Houston looked to gain ground on the first place St. Louis Cardinals. Top two, Roger gets Weaver swinging. Albert Pujols then can't check his swing. Big bat down on strikes. Roger just adding to the record books, rolling down. Then Juan Rodriguez takes his shot, waves at strike three. Aaron Miles takes his chance at Roger, sets him down. Six Ks on the Knights for Clemens. And Clemens went out to warm up in the sixth, but manager Phil Garner came out and took the ball from him before the inning started, allowing the capacity crowd in Houston a chance to pay their respects to one of the best ever to play the game. He retired from the Yankees, but the Astros managed him back and he gave him three years to remember. Back to the action we go. Down the line, Brad Ausmus with a double pass. Scott rolling and rattles around in the corner. Rodriguez comes up with it quickly, but the newly acquired Aubrey, Aubrey Huff scores to tie the game at one. With the score three to one, Houston in the sixth. John Rodriguez singles to right. Chris Duncan once again hits the dish, and the Cardinals cut it to one. Top seven, Ronnie Belliard grounds it to second, but it's enough to bring Nelson home from third, and we're knotted up at three. Here's where things get interesting. One out in the seventh with two men on for the Strohs, and Berkman hits a ground ball to second. Belliard fields and tries to make the tag on Craig Biggio and throw to first for the double play. Now, had the double play been completed, the cards get out of the inning, but second base umpire calls Biggio safe, saying Belliard never tagged him. Now take another look. Did he go out of the baseline? Was the tag applied? It's close, it's close. But as so often happens, one batter later, Aubrey Huff, fly away ball, puts a charge into one three-run shot, and that makes it 7-4 Astros, and that's where we'd finish. Roger didn't get the win, but he'd get a great send-off from the Houston faithful, and his ball club came away with the double. Two years ago, the National Hockey League had a labor strike so bad they had to cancel their entire season. Last year, upon hockey's return, they did not have their annual exposition of the best of the best and did not host an All-Star game. Now, perhaps some progress has been made as the NHL has decided to reinstate the showcase exhibition game. But does anybody know about it? With the NHL scheduled to open a brand new store only several blocks down from our 51st Street studio, and the All-Star game only a few days away, I took to the streets to find out. The question is, do you know when the NHL All-Star game is, and will you watch? No and no, unfortunately. No, I'm not. No, you're not? Do you know when the NHL All-Star game is? No, I don't. I'm not a uh, hockey fan. No, sir, I don't. No, you don't know? No, sir. Any idea where it would be? No, sir, I don't. Uh, I know it's in Dallas. The game is uh, Wednesday. Then, right? Yes, the game is on Wednesday. We have a winner. College football has never been big in the tri-state. Until now. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights ranked as high as 15th in the BCS and took the area by surprise with their dramatic victory over Louisville. Greg Schiano's bunch were destined for their second straight bowl game and a possible berth in a BCS bowl game. 
Although Rutgers would fall short of that BCS Bowl game, they finished the season at 11-2 and faced the 7-6 Kansas State Wildcats in the inaugural Texas Bowl. Rutgers got on the board first with Tim Brown taking this 14-yard swing pass from quarterback Mike Teal cutting it to the outside and putting the Scarlet Knights ahead 7-0. But the Knights wanted more in the first as Teal drops back and hits Brown again, this time for a 49-yard strike. Brown would end the day with four catches and 101 yards. In the second, KSU tries to end the dream. Jeff Snodgrass slipping his way to a 44-yard field goal less than two minutes into the quarter. And the Wildcats weren't ready to go quickly as Rutgers' punt was fielded low and fielded by Yamon Figures at his own 25-yard line with a hang time that short. Figures' teammates could help him along the way as he was off to the races. A 76-yard return and Kansas State brought up to 14-10. Ah, but the ever-important momentum into halftime as Rutgers, with less than a minute to go, Jeremy Ito hit a 37-yarder to make it 17-10 Rutgers at the half. But that's as close as KSU would get as Freeman from his own territory has it taken away by Quintero Fierson. It was just a race to the end zone. The Scarlet Knights are up another seven. 11.50 left in the third and Ray Rice running big hole up the middle takes it 46 yards and the Knights just dominated on offense leading in rushing 211 yards to 31 and we see why right there and from there it was just icing on the cake as Ito hit chip shots from 23 and 21 yards the final score Rutgers 37 Kansas State 10 and a well-deserved shower for coach Greg Schiano. Carlos Delgado was one of Mets general manager Omar Minaya's big ticket pickups in the last season. And with a 275 batting average, 38 home runs, and 114 runs batted in, the Mets got a great deal of production out of Delgado. But that's not all Delgado's capable of, as today we found him at the Boys and Girls Club in the Bronx. Delgado was shown around some karate classes, played some ping pong with one of the children, and was even giving some advice on how to cover first base in the indoor facility that the club has. It's here that I caught up with the Mets slugger. We want to know what this means to you coming out to an event here at the Boys and Girls Club. You know, this is important. I mean, this is another dimension of my, you know, of, of my career, having the opportunity to uh, to work with kids. I, um, I, I found out about uh, Kips Bay uh, Boys and Girls Club uh, early in the summer, and I paid a visit, and I talked to the, actually the people that run the club, and, uh, and I promised them I will come back when the kids were in, and I want to see how the, the program was running. So this is, this is awesome, you know, it's, in, it's in, in, a, in a tough community, give the kids a, a safe place to be uh, after school to, you know, do their home, to help them with their homework, do their sports, and, you know, and mingle with other kids, and the most important thing, get them out of the street. So it's, it, it is a good day. I mean, indeed, they have a beautiful facility, too, so it makes it a little nicer to, uh, to come and hang out. What do you think it means for these kids? They come home from school on Monday, they come here, and all of a sudden there's Carlos Delgado. Well, you know, I, I, I like to think I, I, of myself as, 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 a, as a regular person. Uh, it, it is nice to see the reaction. It's nice to see when, they, when they're happy, when they're happy to see you. You know, on my end, all I can do is just try to be a, a good player, a good citizen. And, you know, like I say, we, we have been blessed uh, that we're in a position where we can help others. And I think they're doing a great job. That's very good to see. Thanks for your time, Carlos. Thank you so much. Without a ring since the 2000 Subway Series against the Mets, Yankee fans are left a bit unsatisfied. During all this, let's keep in mind that not a single player from that 2000 Mets roster remains on that team. Mike Piazza held out for a while, but after 2005 and seven plus years, the Mets said goodbye to their New York icon. In the Bronx in recent years, Yankee fans have expected to win, and expected to win with homegrown guys. The term true Yankee gets thrown around a lot. Is Mike Messina, who's going into his seventh year with the Bombers, a true Yankee, even without the hardware? Yankee fans should be used to the idea by now. Victories aren't there, and Bernie Williams, the man at the center of it all in the 90s, was offered a minor league deal, which he turned down. Now, after the 2008 season, the house that Ruth built will be closed and torn down to make room for the new Yankee Stadium. First the star, then the stadium. Things are changing in Yankee land, and they're changing fast. With the boss, George Steinbrenner, not looking well, and his hand-picked successor recently arrested for suspected DUI, 
how are the most recognizable and winningest franchise in sports supposed to proceed? General Manager Brian Cashman made considerable efforts to restock the farm system of late, and perhaps the stability will come from a new rudder of stability in a player, a star in which we can believe. For now, New York fans will have to enjoy the last two years of the original Yankee Stadium and the fading stars of the men who brought it its most recent glory. That does it for us tonight. Wherever you are, thanks for tuning in. For everyone here at Sportsnet New York and who aided in this production, I'm John Eddy. Good night.